Do you know who we are? The most dangerous morning show. Put some respect on it. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests on the line this morning. New movie that's coming out this weekend. We have Marvin Preet. Did I say that right, Marvin Preet? Marvin Peart. Mar- Marvin, Marvin Peart. Peart. And we have Robert De Niro. Welcome, guys. And what's your son's name? Trey Peart. And Trey Peart. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. First of all, it's a pleasure to have you on, Marvin. It's a privilege to have you on, Robert. But I need to talk to the young man, okay? The young prodigy y'all got, all right? He's That's the, right. He's the brains behind this whole operation, okay? We can okay? tell he's the brains. Now, talk to us about this this war with Grandpa. Yeah, so it was originally a school assignment. I was in third grade, and um, the rule in the house was I had to read the book before I watched the movie. So once I was done reading this book, I was super hyped to watch the movie because I had held up my end of the deal. Right. So once I was done reading the book, I was looking all over the movie, looking all over, couldn't find it. And once I was and then I told my parents, cause I realized that they're in the movie business. And then my mom, she taught me how to do a pitch. It's all thanks to her. And then me and my mom, we came together, told my dad, and then here we are. Ooh, how old are you, man? I'm um, 15. God, drop one of the clues, but you know what I was doing at 15? We don't want to know what you were doing at 15. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I we don't, don't know. want to know what you were doing at 15. Hey, congrats to you, man. That is amazing. That is, how are you holding up during virtual schooling? I, I know you started virtual schooling. How, how is that? Because my kids are driving me crazy. I, I hate second grade homework. I hate third grade homework. I hate it all. Well, you're going to hate ninth, ninth grade homework even more. <laughs> That's when, when you know, you, you're left in the dust. You don't know what they're doing, what they're doing. I have my daughter doing her homework right now. Doesn't it make you feel dumb when they're asking you questions and you be like, I did this before, but I just don't know if the answer's right. And then when they go to school and the answer's wrong and you be like, well, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> hey, Robert, uh, the, war with, the war with Grandpa. Interesting choice to come out with this movie after the, after the Irishman. Why this role? Well, I did this movie, we must have shot it, what, four years ago, oh, wow. Marvin? Yeah, yeah, about four years ago. And, and um, we did The Irishman after that, uh, though it wouldn't really matter what the sequence was. Uh, I liked it. I liked uh, Tim Hill, the director, and Marvin. And, and I, there was a sweet twist of the whole thing that Trey was the, the, the one who brought it to his father. And and um, I liked the, the whole thing. And, the, and, and Tim Hill was a, very good in who he wanted to cast. And... <laughs> Certain, sorry guys, certain mm-hmm. ideas that um, uh, that he that he had, and that we talked about the script, and then I didn't know there was a book. I don't think I, there was a book that I remember. And then he, I was told about the book, so I said, "Let me look at the book." And I spoke to, to Tim Hill about that. He was very open to that and um, to certain things, minor stuff that we had worked on, changed to refer referred to in the book. And then we had to all run this by Trey. <laughs> that's right that's right the boss that's it you know everything came through me so how are you as a grandfather robert de niro i'm okay you know, I'm, you know I, I i i try to do the right thing and give my grandkids uh space at the same time what they need and but my their parents my kids are there you know they're the ones who make the choices and um so it's, uh, I mean, I guess they say that with the grandparents, it's easier because you don't have to be the the immediate cop on the beat. But I enjoy my grandkids a lot and I, adore them. I have a grandpa question for you. Are you at the stage in your career where every movie is going to have to have grandpa in the title? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I know it does it. And then it's going to be great grandpa. And if I'm lucky enough, great, great grandpa and great, great, great grandpa. Absolutely. Now, now, how difficult is it if if you want to shoot now with COVID-19? What, what? What rules and regulations do you guys have to stand by, or is it one of those things you say, "Well, you know what, I'm just going to wait for a little bit"? Well, we're we're that's an issue, but things are moving forward. I have a, a thing I'm doing with Marty Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio that we were supposed to be might have even been finished by now, maybe, but you know, eventually, probably in the spring, we'll start it, and and most likely, I hope where it's intended to be shot in Oklahoma, but it could move if things look uh, bad. Right. Now, now, Marvin, how did you know not to dismiss Trey on this one? Because I, 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 I'm I, sure this isn't the first project Trey has brought to you. Actually, it was the first project. Wow. Really? Yeah. 
Thank God for nepotism, baby. I love it. I love black nepotism. And I hope, you, I, I hope you paid him right. I hope you paid him okay. I paid him. I made sure I was paid okay. <laughs> All right. If you brought me a project, I treat you the same the same way. <laughs> how, did, how did you know this was the one, though? Well, we were actually looking for, we had just finished a film with um, John Travolta, and we were looking for our next project. And it so happened I was leaving for LA the next morning, and my wife comes in, who's my partner my business partner as well. And she was like, hey, Trey has something he wants to talk to you about. And I'm, I gave her that look like, hey, I'm just shuffling. I had to get out of here in the morning. And she said, no, no, get that look up. You're going to give him five minutes. And he sat down and he pitched me this story. And I'm like, wow. And he goes, and I said, it's a book? And he goes, yeah. I go, uh, he goes, but I have to take it back to school. And I say, email your teacher. Let her know your dad is going to take it for a couple of days. I took it on my flight in the morning, read it. It was a small chapter book. And I landed, I called home. And I said, listen, this is a great project called publisher and let's see if it's available well, come what, to find out it sold about 1.3 million copies wow wow what, what are the difficulties you know and this is for you and robert of creating material that's enjoyable for kids and adults well that it just works you know i i mean i liked it i i, I liked it because I, I like young people i like kids i have fun uh with them and they're the the uh the little girl, uh, Poppy, was adorable. Uh, all the kids were great. The whole cast um, were, were terrific. Uh, and I had some old friends like uh, Chris Walken there. And uh, uh, I don't know Cheech Marin, but he was great. Um, I didn't really know him until then. Maybe I met him over the years. But uh, it's just that it's that it works or it's funny. And hopefully some parts of it are or more than some parts, whatever. What, what, uh, what about you, Marvin? What do you feel? What do you think yeah, the difficulties wait. are? It's very difficult. I mean, we we want to be in the family business because as a family, when you start having kids, mm -hmm. you realize there isn't a lot of live action material out there. There's a lot of animation, but not a lot of live action. So we had watched a movie called Parental Guidance that we loved, and which is why we hired those writers who did that movie. You know, Parental with Bette Midler and Billy Crystal. And then so we, you know, we saw maybe a movie like this once every five years. Mm -hmm. Right. So we thought it was an opportunity and, and we're going to continue to develop and, and produce movies in this space. That's what I love. You know, I, I have five kids and oh, yeah. for myself, it's it's a good thing where you could actually watch a movie with the kid and not have to be like, cover your ears or cover your eyes, you know. And, and that's that's what makes me excited to see this movie, especially during this time where it's, it's so little to do. It's so much coming on TV. So the fact that that we can all watch it as a family is it's the most important thing. Yeah. Now, yeah. Trey, now, Trey, did you soak up any game from uh, Mr. De Niro being, you know, being 15? Because if if, if I, my memory serves me correct, uh, he dropped out of school at 16 to pursue an acting career. Yeah, 16. So, Marvin, yeah. would you allow Trey to do that? No. <laughs> I, got school, I, got, I got school right after this. I mean, <laughs> what if this movie is super successful and he just wants to do this full time? And he said, listen, on, Mr. Dad. De Niro did it. Yeah, Robert De Niro did. He's I was super lucky. successful. <laughs> now, you can count on your hand how that, that, that conversation. That <laughs> he said, I don't even want to have that conversation. <laughs> why, why, why did you do that, though, Robert? What, what, what was the time frame? What was so different back then that you could Well, I, I just was not interested in school. Uh, I and regret that in some day, ways now, but I just wasn't. But I was interested in acting, and I what I did was I went to a night school uh as a teenager uh where i w was with adults and people from other countries who worked in the day and were more, more very serious about it people from the middle east from other parts of the world and uh, then i would go to acting school in the day so that that was how i i did it but i never graduated high school it was a night school program high school courses and mm -hmm. i graduated some or not even graduate just got through history uh even i think Spanish, English, certain things, but I did not graduate. I just never, you know, but I was more interested in going to acting school. Okay. I, I want to ask you, uh, Mr. Course. De Niro, do you, do you still want to punch Donald Trump in the face? <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we all realize now we're way past that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> way past that. The total lunatic. And I, I think people who even support him, some people, others, they still think he's okay. He's He's crazy, but it's okay. But he is genuinely, ge genuinely nuts. I was gonna say, huh? you surprised with the people that are still following him, especially yes, the minorities. Yes, I am. But you know, there's always somebody. You know, you can't you can't please everybody, and some people are just whatever their reasons. Everybody has their reasons, and 
But we, we, we as a country, we have to move forward and we have to leave those people behind because and we've done that all, always. There's always going to be a segment of the population that is just not for the not rooting for the whole population, not rooting for the country. And that's where we, we find ourselves with a with a lunatic who will pull those people if he's I think that if he was ever reelected and it ain't over till it's over, he would be pulled eventually by his his um, cowardly uh, enablers, the senators. They'd have to because the, the, the people would say, look, you've got to get him out. He's going to he's going to we're committing suicide. That's how bad it is with this guy. Did, did the Secret Service visit you after you did that video saying you wanted to punch him in the face? No, no, they, they I talked to somebody there, but that, that's it. That was upset? It's not that I want to punch him in. Well, I, you know, partially you do, but it's just the <laughs> idea of punching him in the face with ideas or with, with arguments and so on, even with Joe Biden uh, debating with him. It's just put him down. He's a dog. He's a mutt. He's a punk. He, he, and he's stupid. He thinks he's smart and he has some sensitivity about, about, um, about he gets offended when Biden said some smart. He said, don't say something to me about smart. Yeah. He, somebody in his family must have put him down saying he was dumb. He is dumb. He's stupid. Mm -hmm. And it's dangerous. It's beyond dangerous. He's, there's nothing worse than a stupid person who thinks they're smart. With power. With power. Right. Did, y did y'all have a relationship prior to him being president? Because, I mean, you ran around in New York. He's a New York guy. Never, never wanted to know him. Never wanted to have anything to do with him. And a lot of New Yorkers would want nothing to do with him because mm -hmm. he was a clown. And now we're seeing it. It's so scary what this guy is doing and what the people who voted for him, what we bought into and what we look like to other people in the, in, around the world. Yeah. Do you think he really had COVID? I do think he has it, yeah. Well, he says he only has a little bit right now. He says he only well, has that's a little bit. But you're never going to get the truth. Mm -hmm. Right. Period. Never going to get the truth. The poor doctors have been compromised. That's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing to me how many people have thrown away their reputations. Yes. For him. Yeah. Yes. It, he's tainted everybody. Only a few have gotten out. Uh, Fauci, Mattis, one or two others. He, he just makes you... He he may, he compromises everybody, taints them. Now I, I was told, correct me if I'm wrong, that a lot of people in in the Italian community don't like you being so vocal against Trump. That's too bad. I'm sorry. This is not about any community. It's about the world community. It's mm -hmm. about the country community. And I'm sorry, we have a lunatic here. You know, I can play certain parts. That's one thing. But when you got a lunatic, I have to know I have a good president taking care of the country and and me and all of us. Not not those, those are those are movies. Those aren't real in a certain way. The president is real, but the problem is he is not real. He doesn't he doesn't live in reality. Mm -hmm. And that's we can't have that as Americans. We can't have that. Period. Who do you dislike more, Mickey Rourke or Donald Trump? I, I don't I don't care about Mickey Rourke. Uh, Donald Trump is a, <laughs> oh, a, um, oh, is, uh, <laughs> is a danger to this country. Sorry, and you guys know we all know that. Trey, are you into politics like this? Are you watching the debates? Are you into it at all? Yeah, I'm watching the debates. I'm keeping up with it, seeing the headlines. But, you know, I'm just keeping enough knowledge to where I can easily, like, dig deep, dig down deep enough in knowledge to where I, when I can vote in a couple years. What did you think about when you seen the fly flying around Pence's head in the last debate? What, what, what were your thoughts? Let's start with you, Robert De Niro. When you seen that fly land on his head? When I saw that fly, somebody sent me a thing about that. It's a, that it means it's, it portends something in biblical times and other times of death. That there's something distrustful going on with the leader. I forget. But what I thought is just that what Pence has in his hair, the fly liked. <laughs> and, so you thought you had a right to stay there. <laughs> Hey, Trey, is there less freedom in creating a film that's inspired by a book? There's freedom and restraints at the same time because, you know, you have to stick along with the story of the book, so you can't stray too far from it. And then people will start saying, oh, you know, this is not even the same thing as what I read a couple of years ago, you know. So you have to, you know, stay along with the storyline. With um, But in terms of there was a bit of a generational gap when we were making this film and making uh, decisions on, you know, what pranks to do and, you know, just to how it go about this script, because, you know, they, they didn't have um, a Minecraft-like game um, in the 80s, you know? Mm -hmm. They had Monopoly. Pac-Man. So we had to switch up 
games like those. Yeah, so we had to switch up games like those that um, uh, Mr. De Niro's character could then play off of um, against Peter. And then, you know, the dodgeball game, I'm pretty sure it was a basketball game mm-hmm. or something something like that. They had dodgeball uh, but, back then, Trey. They had dodgeball back then. Now. Yeah, but they didn't I have trampoline, trampoline dodgeball. dodgeball. You're right. No, no. They didn't. Trampoline <laughs> so, Robin, now, how, how were you doing that? How was Robin during the, the trampoline dodgeball game? Front flips. He's in great shape. So, front flips. <laughs> I was He's okay. Been... I mean, I, I had fun. I'd never seen dodgeball to that extreme, carry to that to that level, but it's it looked it looked like fun. It was fun to watch. It was fun to shoot. We do it in little pieces, so it was it was it was okay. I gotta say, watching that scene as a producer, I literally looked over because I got there. And I said, "Is that why is De Niro standing on a trampoline?" I said, "We we got insurance for this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> is he really gonna?" And he was in it. Really, he was in it. Robert, how important is it to allow the roles you play to like age with you? Like, it seems like you're embracing your age rather than forcing yourself to. We do these youth for roles. I I think it's very important to accept who you are, what you, what you are, uh, your age. Don't try and make your something yourself something that you're not, because everybody's onto it. They see it, and I respect people who say this is me. Take it or leave it. Uh, I had certain qualities, uh, whether it be physical or other. Uh, when I was younger, I don't have those anymore. But I am who I am, and I work to keep myself healthy and 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 um, in shape. Uh, one should concern themselves about that more than all the other stuff, all the cosmetic stuff. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't subscribe to that stuff, and I think it looks kind of funny and silly on people who do do it most of the time. Mm-hmm. And the people who do it and get away with it are the ones who do it so well you can't notice it, except you say, well, there, that person is this age, and they look like they're that age, and. That's impossible. Tom Cruise. Uh, I'm glad you said impossible because I was thinking well, Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know what he does, so I would say, but I've seen other people that I say they look great, but it's not real. Mm-hmm. How, how hard was Too it to break out of the the, the mobster image? Because we, you know, we always love the mobster roles and the Italian roles. Was it hard to break out of those roles at all? Yeah, I, that's one thing that I do and have fun doing, but that's only one thing. I do other stuff. Very yeah. few actors do comedy and drama as well as Bob does. Goodfellas is celebrating uh, 30 years. Did, did you know at, at the time when you were shooting it that it would be looked at as one of the greatest movies ever made? No, I didn't have an, uh, had no idea at that time um, what how it would be received or whatever. Uh, that That's a lot. Most movies you just don't, you have no idea. You can never predict what you think a movie, how it'll be received, no matter how you're feeling about it. It doesn't mean it's going to be received the way you'd like it to be received. Are you are you aware of the impact that 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 movie has on hip hop? I've been told. Mm-hmm. Now, is there any movie that you turned down and was like, "Damn, I shouldn't have turned that movie down"? No, I I, I got to say I'm pretty. I've been pretty lucky with everything. I've been, you know, I I I'm okay. I'm happy with what I did. All right, you're pretty good in the the woman department too, man. You dated Naomi Campbell back in the day. Well, <laughs> how how long is this interview? I, I have to go upstairs, and I've got to I've got to be working with my my kid now. Okay, well, give, give, um, let me get you. Let me get one more question from you. Is it true that you were supposed to play Jesus in the Last Temptation of Christ? Is that a true rumor? Marty uh, offered me the part, wanted me to do it. I said, I said, I'm not really into doing that i don't want i don't want to do it but if you need me to do it in order to make the movie i'm there but he he went with uh william defoe and that was fine and uh, uh but i that's that's how i left it with him All got right. you well we appreciate you brothers for joining us marvin trey pert also robert de niro thank you guys the war with grandpa make sure you check it out and, and it is today it's out wear today. Mask, wear a mask is today across the country wear a mask Social distance. When you go see it, yes. be safe, be well. But no, yeah. 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 be safe. Right, Trey, well, Marvin, Marvin, back Mr. up. We need to see peace. you guys here in person, man. We need y'all to come by the studio. Thanks, Robert, Robert, Robert is never no, coming by the studio. Why not? I want to get that podcast <laughs> of yours, Bob, man. Huh? I want to get that podcast of yours. Oh, let's do it. I, I, I want. I want. I want. I, I'm interested to see where Trey's future goes. Okay, let's do I need him to be more successful than his dad. a studio in 10 years. <laughs> See, Robert said it. He put it in the universe. All righty. Exactly. Thank you, guys.
Thank you. All right. Peace. Have a good one. Thank you.